Hi everybody, this is Scott Saad. This is, I believe, the first Saad Truth clip since uh, the new year. Hope that your new year is off to a great start. I just returned uh, with the family from uh, Florida. I went there, I had a few uh, professional meetings. Also tried to relax a bit, but the weather was uncooperative. In any case, uh, I'm currently reading this book. <clears throat> could see it it's naturalist by eo wilson it's his autobiography great book i highly recommend it and uh in the book he recounts all of the uh, expeditions that he's uh, had certainly early in his career when he went to new caledonia and uh australia and uh what is now vanuatu and other uh, south pacific islands and uh that triggered a thought in my head which i tweeted earlier today uh, which, of course, led one noble person uh, of perpetual peace to then tag my university, trying to get me fired. And then he, and then when I put the heat up on this guy, he deleted his account. And basically what I was arguing is that in the same way that many species go extinct uh, or are severely uh, threatened, when an invasive species comes in. It could be in the flora or fauna kingdoms. Uh, the same logic applies when it comes to if a if there's an open border immigration policy where millions of people come in who don't share the values of the host nations, with enough time, there will be the exact same type of extinction of the host culture. <clears throat> but just to put in context, I wanted to read for you here this is an article written uh, in the wildlife society the a few years ago march 18 2019 invasives are the primary cause of global extinctions in the past five centuries so i'm just reading for you now i'll put it i'll put the link to the article in the uh, in the description section invasive species are either the culprits or the accomplice in the extinction of some 300 species across the planet According to new research, it tells us that we have quite a challenge, said Tim Blackburn, an invasion biology professor at University College London and the lead author of a study published recently in Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment. It shows us that alien species are a major cause of extinction. Blackburn and his co-authors examined the International Union for the Con Conservation of Nature's Red List of species for species that have gone extinct since 1500. <clears throat> excuse me, including the passenger pigeon, I won't read the scientific names, the Tasmanian tiger, the dodo, and the great auk. They also looked at the reasons the IUCN listed for the species' demise. The team discovered that since the 1500s, 953 listed species had gone extinct. Around 300 of those disappeared, at least in part due to pressure from alien species, including 261 animal species and 39 plant species. This was the primary driver for extinction among these species, a surprise to the researchers who had assumed habitat destruction would be the main cause for species extinctions in the world. Furthermore, 42% of the 300 species that disappeared was due solely to pressures from alien species. Alien species are more than 12 times as likely to be listed as the cause of extinction than native species, Blackburn said. According to their analysis, island species were particularly vulnerable to invasives. In Hawaii, alien species like cats had a hand in causing extinction in an entire genus of O-birds. I don't know how to pronounce that, that name. Including the Hawaiian O and the Ka uh, Kaua O, while brown tree snakes have caused the extirpation of a number of the native birds on Guam, as well as the extinction of the Guam fly catcher. With perhaps four to 500 new alien species, species populations turning up around the world every year, Blackburn said the problem may become even worse in the future. In an effort to deal with this issue, he called for heightened biosecurity measures to protect native ecosystems from stopaway species on container ships airplanes, and other means. In a lot of cases, we don't know what the impacts of those species are going to be, he said. So now, I, I discovered this article after having posted my my 
epiphany, my insight earlier today, drawing an analogy between invasive species in the animal uh, and uh, plant kingdoms, the flora and fauna kingdoms, uh, with uh, the extinction of cultures and societies, either through war, one culture you know, uh, comes in by force and takes over another, eradicating all of the cultural fossils of the conquered culture, or in the case of the current reality where the West is involved in an orgiastic faux empathy of uh, open border policy where you let in people that don't share any of your foundational values with enough time it's only demography demography is truly destiny you will end up having an extinction of the whole societies there are endless such examples in history but perhaps no cases where a host society was the willing and proud participant in its self-destruction. Okay. I am a product of immigration, so I don't need people to lecture me about the virtues of a rational and sane immigration policy. People do face hardships, usually because of their religion or their race or their sexual orientation, where they might be killed and ex executed, their entire uh, families erased because they're not born into the right uh, religion. Uh, and therefore, we might decide as a empathetic society to say, hey, there'll be some minimal number of people that we will allow into our countries because uh, you know, we, we are an empathetic people. Other people were born with... Uh, a poorer lot than ours and so let's open our uh, societies to them and that has of course worked well as long as it was measured it was rational it did not uh, violate reason and logic so for example the concept of cultural relativism where you shouldn't judge the cultural and religious beliefs of others because that would be cultural imperialism is an idea pathogen that I discuss in the parasitic mind because that's insane, right? If you let in people from societies that have 95 to 99% endemic Jew hatred as measured by nonpartisan survey companies and then you let them in the thousands if not millions, how is it surprising that the host society will have an exponential and astronomical growth in Jew hatred? The same applies for any other mechanism, right? If if I let in people who, for whatever reason in their societies, they abhor uh, gay people, well, then if you let in millions of such people that come with the cultural and religious baggage of holding those nefarious, bigoted views, then it's not surprising that there'd be greater homophobia in the whole society. I've explained before when you start any given day, only one of three things can happen to your weight. Your weight can go up, it can stay the same, or it can go down as a result of decisions that you make that day. There is no other possible option that can happen. Same thing applies to immigration. When you let in people in the millions who come from particular societies that are defined by certain, certain values that are perfectly antithetical to those of the host nation. Will that result in a safer society, a freer society, a more enlightened society, or the opposite? It's not rocket science. I still hold out hope that the West will wake up at some point. But believe me, it doesn't take much for you to blink your eyes and then to wake up and say, hey, whatever happened to our free and enlightened societies? Happy New Year, everybody. Don't forget, your voice matters. Get engaged. Cheers, everybody.